When I first came to hospice, I was doing uh, internal medicine and pulmonary, and suddenly I became the medical director of the largest hospice in the country, and this was in Florida. And I realized I wanted to grow this hospice because hospice was important. But all the physicians would say, well, I don't want to send my patient on hospice. I don't want to reduce their hope. In other words, hope became an issue. When I started thinking about myself, I didn't send my lung patients, my COPD and end-stage lung patients to hospice because I didn't want to take away their hope. I didn't want them to stop trying. I didn't want them to stop eating. I didn't want them to give up. And so that hope is a big issue when it comes to hospice. So let's talk about hope for a minute. There's three kinds of hope as I see it. When I thought about hope. So what happened was I was the medical director of this hospice. I started thinking about hope. I realized this was an important issue for me to study. And so there's three forms of hope I would describe. Hope for a cure. So when you go to your doctor and you have pneumonia or you have breast cancer, you want cure. Then there's hope to live a bit longer and to live with quality. So if you have high blood pressure or you have diabetes, we don't cure diabetes, we control it with medicine. So you, have a, you can live longer, have quality of life. We don't, con we don't cure high blood pressure, we just control it. Now you're thinking, wait a minute, hope for cure is not gonna go up on hospice. Hope to live longer and with quality doesn't go up on hospice. Although I should say in parentheses, studies show people do live longer on hospice and their quality is better, but nobody comes on hospice for those reasons. So what's the third form of hope? I'm gonna call the hopes of the dying. So you get in my picture, people who come on hospice, and this is what the studies show, when they come on hospice, their hope levels are low. After a week or two, hope levels go even lower. Every week after that, their hope levels go up. It's not because they're gonna be cured, not because they're gonna live longer, because there's something called the hopes of the dying. And the question is, what are those hopes? And it can be hope for forgiveness. Hope to give love to your families. I give my patients homework. I say, look, you're on hospice, I have some homework for you. And they often say, I'm dying and you're giving me homework? I go, yeah, I give my kids homework, I'm giving you homework. Your first job, and particularly for men, I want you to work on this. How are you gonna show love to your wife and kids? How are you gonna show love to your husband? How are you gonna show love to your parents? Whatever it is, I give them this homework. And I come back in a week and they start thinking about this. So the hopes are the hope for forgiveness, the hope for love, the hope that you won't be alone. Nobody wants to be alone again or in pain. I've had 11 kidney stones. One of my kidney stones occurred while my uh, wife and, and kids were gone. They were gone for the day and I had this kidney stone. It was unbearable because I was alone. In other words, when I have a kidney stone, I like my wife to come in and go, how are you doing? The kids usually run to Blockbuster and get dad a couple movies because they like distraction, you know, something to watch while I'm in pain. They'll bring in water. You know, when they walk past their bedroom, I'll groan a little louder to get some sympathy. But when I was by myself with a kidney stone, it was unbearable. I was ready to throw myself off the top banister, you know, just throw myself off to the floor. And, but can you, and that's a kidney stone. Can you imagine what it's like to be alone and be dying. And you know what happens in our hospitals is the people who are at the end stage, they get put at the end of the hallway, away from everybody else, because nobody really wants to go in there. There's not much to do, they think, and so they're left alone. Or even in our nursing homes, our nurses become uncomfortable going in. They don't know what to say. They don't know what to do. And so it's alone. And that's why one of the goals of hospice is that no one would die alone or in pain. One of the goals of a Sarah Care Hospice, one of our mantras that we say everywhere, is that no one in the US would die alone or in pain. Okay, so we have the forgiveness, we have love, alone, no pain, uh, or uh, die in pain. And then we have um, things like what do you want to accomplish? What hopes, what things do you want to do? In other words, there are things people will accomplish at the end that are heroic. Sometimes simple things, they want to go to a wedding. Sometimes they want to um, say something important to loved ones. And then there's all the spiritual hopes. 
things become crystallized at the end and we can help folk that they'll see their savior, that they'll be in heaven, that they'll, be, they'll see their wife who went before them. All of these are the hopes that hospice helps to develop. And so now when people say, I don't want to put my patient on hospice because I'm going to take away hope, you know that in fact hope goes up on hospice. And these hopes are genuine and they're real. And people who don't understand it, they often give people false hopes. They say, oh dad, you'll be better. Or the physician says, try one more dose of chemo. They know dad's not getting better. They know one more dose of chemo is probably not gonna help. And those are false hopes. Well, hospice really is increasing genuine and true hopes, the hopes of the dying.